Hey guys, welcome back to another Hartman Controls Protector.net tutorial. Today we're going to talk about adding users and credentials. A user is a card holder, but we can also have other credentials such as pin numbers, fobs, clickers, etc. There are two ways of adding users in Protector.net, either by adding them one by one or bulk importing many at once. In this tutorial, we'll cover adding one at a time. To start, on the home page, we'll click on the users icon. It's the first icon on the home screen. Here we get a list of users already in the system. We can use the orange button on the right to change the type of information displayed in the list. Some options can even be changed right from the list view. We can find users quickly by using the search bar. We can also search by first name, last name, or card number. To add additional users, click the add button. When adding a user, the only required fields are first name and last name and that they are assigned to a partition. We'll start by giving this user a name of Ted Jones. The next fields in the general section are optional. I'll explain them briefly. You can read more about precisely what these options do in the software guide. Starts on and expires on allow you to define a range that any credentials attached to this user are valid. It's useful for defining temporary cardholders or contractors. Master and Supervisor alter the rules that regard when a user is allowed through a door or floor. Master users are allowed through any door or floor regardless of schedule or mode. First card in allows any credentials attached to this user to activate first card in schedules. Triple swipe will allow any credentials attached to this user to utilize triple swipe which allow you to present a credential to a door three times to activate a special action. Disengage Alarm will allow any attached credentials to disarm an alarm system connected to a door with a triple swipe action. And finally, Auto Opener, which is an attribute that can have a door automatically open after a credential attached to this user is presented. The next section will allow you to associate up to three images with a user, the first one being the one that shows up in any notification messages. The next section is credentials. Here is where we will input the credentials the user will carry. Most credentials, including fobs, cards, long range clickers, will include a site code and card number. Enter them here and click the add credential button. You'll notice that we generate a pin with every credential. This pin is used for card and pin schedules. You can also add pin only schedules which can be used for pin only and card or pin schedules. You can let us manually enter one for you or deselect and create your own. Finally, the last section is partitions and access groups. A user needs to be part of at least one partition. Here we can select which access privilege groups they will be a part of. A user can be assigned to as many groups as you need. Finally, click Create on the bottom to add your user. We can now add additional users if needed. We also support enrollment of users via a credential presentation. Present a credential to a reader and you'll get an unknown user notification in the notification area. We can simply click this notification and it will take us back to the Add User page with the credential filled in for us. This concludes this tutorial. For more information on users and credentials, check out the applicable chapter in the software guide. For information about bulk importing users, see the next video.